Hi everybody, I'm Giancarlo. I'm Felicia. And this is our review of... Planetarium. By... Stéphane Vachon. Who is... Quebec. That's right. Keep Mr. Quebec. Homegrown. Over here in Quebec. I haven't been to the a Planetarium in Montreal. a long time. It's brand new. It's a couple of years old. The new one. Oh, new. They built a new one. Oh, I didn't hear that. One. That's what I'm, I'm... Yeah, I usually don't listen to you. No. Sorry. <laughs> this yeah. looks chill. It looks long. This looks no, complicated. It's, no, it's not. It's not? It's not complicated at all. It's actually Oh my easy. god. <laughs> it's not complicated at all. It's not. You have it's the just... whole orbit of the universe with all of the constellations. Yeah, but every turn you're For the past, for the past 3,000 years, but it's not complicated at all. Dude, you lost me already. You don't have to deal with this. <laughs> I'm kidding. This looks I'm fun. kidding. <laughs> okay. Players compete to take part in the creation of a new solar system. The player with the most points at the end game wins. Game here is set. Random elements includes how the matter tokens are placed on the board and each evolution deck, which will be shuffled separately. Two will be drawn from each deck for each player and you'll discard one of your final evolution cards. Evolution cards are objective cards. Low being easiest, but worth less points. High being a little harder, but worth more points. And final ones are for end game scoring only. A player's hand size is always five cards. Let's get into gameplay to see how you achieve these objectives. On your turn, first you'll either move a matter token or a planet. Matter tokens must be moved in a clockwise direction. They move from a white dot to another white dot or onto a planet that is one space away, until they can move up to two spaces when evolution track accelerates. And matter tokens cannot move through another matter token. Planets moves as matter tokens except they can move as far as they wish on their orbit until they reach a matter token, and can pass through another planet. When it lands on a matter token or vice versa, take the matter token and place it on that planet on your planet mat. Next, on your turn, you can fulfill one low or high evolution card if you have the prerequisites as listed here. These include matter and can include types of planets, terrestrial or gaseous. Remove the appropriate matter token from the planet and place them in the evolution track on the next free space. Place the card next to the board on the corresponding planet with one of your markers. Besides the points you'll get, You'll need to check if it turns the planet into a habitable one or a hostile planet. You'll compare the total points of the cards there for each, and the one that has the most will dictate what the planet is. These will be important later on when completing final evolution cards, as those might be prerequisites besides matter tokens and planet type. This gravity icon will make you grab any matter token from anywhere on the board when completing it and placing it on any of your planets. And this icon will allow you to discard it instead of completing it to draw a low evolution card. When completing a card, draw one from any pile. Remember that final evolution cards will give you lots of points if you can fulfill it at the end, but will take up a slot in your hand and you can only hold five cards, so it's a dead card until the end. So do consider this. When a token will be placed here, it'll accelerate the creation of the solar system, meaning matter tokens can move up to two spaces. When placed here, it'll trigger the end game. The active player finishes his turn and can play any number of final evolution cards that has the required prerequisites. Then the other players get their final turn and completing any final evolution they can. The player with the most points wins. Planetarium offers unique and original mechanics which fits the theme extremely well. Like for example how everything needs to move in a certain direction. The game comes with nice sturdy components and a huge pro point goes to the artwork of the planets which are all unique, not one repeating. I'm even going to give this game another pro point on graphic design and layout. Everything is concise, clear, and there's even narrative on the cards and solar system information in the rulebook to add to the theme. The game does have a good blend of tactics and strategy and how to manage them with a five hand limit and it's pretty balanced so that a player lagging can score huge points with final evolution cards. There are some cons for me however, some being minor. First is replay value. Each deck, as you can see, is pretty small, and I wish there were more different cards. You'll end up deducing, once you know the game, what others hold in terms of objectives based on what you have. Another con is how different the game feels in different player count. At 2, there's a nice back and forth on how you change the planets to habitable or hostile, but that becomes more chaotic, and players have less control when more players are involved. Also, I can't put my finger on it, but it does seem like it lacks a little something. I'm not sure what exactly, but like there's this big black hole or something. No puns intended. Maybe excitement? Or it feels too much like science? I'm not entirely sure. Still, a very noteworthy game, Planetarium scores a 7 
out of 10. Subscribe now to our channel to stay in the loop. If you like our work, help us continue by sharing the channel to your gaming group. Thanks for watching and happy gaming.